Hey, it's Mr. Wagner for my seventh grade social studies class. Um, this is what's going on in class for 5-4 and 5-5. Five, five. Um, we're learning about the Raj. This is brand new. Like, we didn't get to this when we were kind of talking about India before COVID-19 quarantine time. Um, so basically, um, as you can, I'm going to kind of go through the notes on the screen, and you're taking and filling in, fill in the blank notes on this, but it always helps to have somebody kind of explain it to you. Um we're talking about the Mughal Empire in India declining, and a famous quote is that the sun never sets in the British Empire. So no matter if you're on where we live in North America, or if you're in India on the other side of the world, Eastern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere, um, the British have a colony there. Um, British colonialism was all over the world. Um, how can I give you that? British imperialism map. Kind of a big deal. So if you see in this map here, the blue is all places where the British were trying to either they basically set up colonies. They don't even want to really the place to look nice except or get better, except for the spots where they're going to be going in and exporting things to send back and make stuff in their factories um, and then usually sell back to the place that they're stealing the borrowing the uh, supplies from india being one of them parts of africa um australia was actually you know we know that, that was kind of like more of like a prison place but so then basically they said the sun ever sits in the british empire okay um so it's called imperialism um, I'll present my screen. That's always smarter. Durr. And you have a British person and there's people waiting on him. And I think he's getting a pedicure, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Um, that's the quote, the sun never sets in the British empire. Um, I showed you the map. India was one of the most important because of all the valuable things there. And there's the map for the slideshow, right? It's a little more simplified in this map, but it does the job. Um, there, there's the political cartoon. They're milking uh, India for money. It's rather disturbing. Uh, the British East India Company. I believe if you've ever watched Pirates of the Caribbean, they're actually like the bad guys behind everything, trying to do whatever they can to make money. At the end, they're defeated. Um, but... They were trying to control trade in India between 1600 and, I guess, colonial times. They were still kind of going strong, which you'll learn about if you make it to eighth grade. Um, and they kind of go in and they either forcefully make you listen or they kind of trick the person in control to establish a friendly relationship. But then they interpret it the way they want to, um, you know, like all right, well, we'll be friends here. And friends means I set up like a city here and I start trading. Next thing you know, you don't listen and we've got better guns than you. So then I'm taking stuff instead of trading for it. And then I just sell it for money. Straight, straight profit. Good if you're a businessman. Bad if you're a morally strong human being. Um... Basically, when the empire was weak, it's like the British were kind of waiting for that. So when the empire gets weak and India doesn't have good control of its area, um, they basically are battles in the 1700s. And then the British pretty much take over and have like a, a police force there all the time. People that are in the government are their choice that are put there um, and they, that'll listen to the British, you know. <clears throat> So this isn't the British actually going in and ruling a country as the British. They have a company that works there. Uh, the guy on the left is an example of a sepoy. Um, this is this is called selling out, and it's it's tough. Um, Indian people who want to make more than the very low wages that you're paid there or nothing, you know, pennies, um, if you will, uh, they can become like a police slash army person and help to control their own people. Um, that's called a sepoy and that's a big vocab word. And that's, that's very tough for culture to understand. Like you can't, you're selling out and giving up on your culture and helping 
rally and curtail your own culture. And that's, that's some like karma's going to get you later kind of stuff in a lot of people's minds. How can you hurt your own people for a better paycheck? Well, it's a big question nowadays too. Um, you're going to learn that, especially if you become a history major. Um, what the heck's going on in that picture? We're going to explain that. Uh, the British tried to um, bring westernize as like a verb, and it means like make places like China and India more like England, France, the strong part of Europe, uh, North America, United States more like. Um, so the, the British actually tried to get rid of the caste system, which is the foundation of Hinduism. Um, they banned sati sati is the picture so if your husband dies then you join him as a wife <laughs> um that wouldn't go over too well right and basically you just jump into the fire with him um i guess that's like the wedding vows you know like we're together for everything like literally um they tried to spread christianity um and the last one says um you know, this is like a cultural imperialism too. Imperialism means you go in and you try to make money by taking stuff without paying for it and selling it and bossing the people around and possibly beating them up if they don't listen. But cultural imperialism is when you go and you try to like conquer their culture and force them to be like the dominant culture, um, the, the white British Christian culture. That's some shaky ground you're treading on. Um, going right to this, looks like we had some, uh, this is really interesting stuff to me. Like the little facts that like create like a mystery show. You watch a mystery show, then the person gets caught because of one little thing. So, um, the sheep boy mutiny was when people who work as sellouts and they, they work as part of the police that helps control the Indian people, but they are Indian. Um, they started kind of having like a conscience and like a debate in their head. And they, when you make a, when you take those guns that aren't very good and you have to like load the bullet and like push it down, like put the powder in, push that in and stuff like that. Um, that picture on the right is actually um, like a packing good. Um, oh no, those are actually the bullets. So the bullets, in order to get them out of the thing they're in, they're in a bag that's made of like, like the bag that's around pork roll. You know, and if you've ever bought the pork roll, it's like this big. And then there's like that like stuff around it you got to cut off. So that's what's all around these bullets. And pork roll is pork and you can't have, you know, pork or beef and you're not even sure what it is. But you know that it's in there, on there, right? So it's around the bullet and take the bullet, put it in the gun. So they actually have like a protest and then that turns into kind of like a riot because cows are sacred to Hindus and Muslims can't eat pork. So if you're either one of the two, both living in India, so you never know, one of them could be working for the British. You refuse to fight because you can't do that because it's against your religion to eat that animal. Um, that got complicated. So there's like a picture that describes it, right? The bullets in there, there's like grease and powder and you would, when you bite the end off of this thing and then you just dump the, what everything that's in there into your um, gun and then you like push it down and whatnot. And that was be against their religion. Is it really? We don't know because of what's now in 2020. Was it that they were just having a problem in their mind? Like, I can't believe I'm helping to control my own people and I just had to kill somebody yesterday. Or is it the fact that they're really just religious? I don't know. But I think people might have been more religious back then. So it could have just been that. I did not push that. Oh, hey, how you doing? Link, link. Um, so people were punished for not loading bullets, and then Hindus and Muslims revolted in 1857. Close to the time we're having a civil war in our country. Um, there was killings, mob violence, mob violence, beautiful since Julius Caesar's time. When you go and there's like a riot, people are talking, and then they're like, kill somebody and, and like just beating them, tackle them and beat them to death. Like that kind of crazy stuff happens. 
and then you crush the rebellion. The British actually probably open fire on people with, and they've got better guns. So it's more guns, and the other people don't have guns. It's not pretty. There's the British and the red. Those, like, I don't know what they're called, but when we watch the video on Gandhi, like, you know, that's the British Empire helmet. Oh, you know, like, firing squad, always fun. Um, the British Lion's Vengeance on the Bengal Tiger, right? The Bengal Tiger represents, um, like, India, because, like, the guy, like, Shere Khan, right? India, the Jungle Book, and the lion represents the British. So trust is broken when there's there's beatings and killings, firing squads and opening up fire on people who don't have guns. Um, Britain says this is crazy. Get the East India Company out of there. <clears throat> but then the government comes in directly, and it's basically a a what's it called? Not a prime minister, oh, not a lieutenant governor. It's right on the tip of my tongue. They rule in, in place of the king because the king is not going to go to India. The king is ruling in England. So they become a royal colony, kind of like some of the early states or colonies in the United States. The Raj refers to the time period when the British are directly ruling India. That's a vocab word, right? Um, the civil service is a government agency. Um, that kind of does everything, and you'll see them a lot in the parts of the movie on Gandhi. Positive of the British rule. So this is, a, you got to understand this. The positives are the new roads and railroads link India. Um, the telegraph and the postal service unite people in India. But it's only the parts that they the British need. If you're a part that doesn't really have anything that the British needs to make factory take to make factory goods somewhere, they go right around you. They don't get a railroad everywhere. It's like, oh, let's make this whole place better. No, it's whatever you need, just enough to make you money if you're British. Um, so irrigation systems, telegraph, postal service, roads and railroads, only on the parts that the British need to get the stuff from to make whatever it may be. Um, new laws mean justice for all people. The rule of law might work, might not. Um, the British probably realized after the United States had the um, American Revolution that you can't have um, martial law and you have to, like you'll learn about this trial and it's crazy and people open fire on unarmed people and you have to be able to have trial by jury. Um, but they usually have British juries, so it's, it's complicated. Um, Western education might be better, depending on if you ask the British. I mean, if you want to get a high paying job and give up on your culture, then you can always do that. Um, customs of like wife having to die with the husband when the husband dies um, could be ended. That could be a good thing for women. Negatives, pretty easy to understand them. Um, you're losing valuable resources that your economy could have grown with and your economy is not allowed to grow because it's used to grow somebody else's economy. Um, you have to buy stuff back that they sell you. It's the only way, and they'll make it, the British will make it like that's the only way you can get, you know, refined sugar is to buy their refined sugar that they take and sell to you. Um, farms grow cash crops rather than food crops. So then people start going hungry, I mean, a lot and dying. That's why Gandhi needs to step up and help out. Um, there is racism involved by the British, um, and it's kind of combined in this time period in the 1800s. Um, it's like you're dumber and less powerful is like a combination of thoughts. And then the British have all the better guns, more money, um, reputation of better schools, and just not a pretty thing. Um, and then westernizing culture means that usually if you have cultural traditions that involving Hinduism you're, you're in your own country where it's freely practiced, you start having to hide it or hide, you know, don't be too Indian, be more Western. 
And that's, that's a very powerful, sad thing throughout history. And the British Empire does that to people. Um, Indian nationalism rises because people feel an identity like we have to preserve our preserve our culture. So nationalism rises. Um, it's like you want to have self rule and get your government back. So why were they doing this? They were barred from top jobs in the Indian civil service. Right? You have you can't be in the government that helps to decide what's going on in your country, even though you are one of the people who were born in that country. Um, wanted more say in government, which they go together. Paid less than British workers in your own country, paid less than people who are there and don't even belong there, in your words. And you are basically like second class citizens in your own country. That's never a good feeling. Ram Mahun Roy, or Wa, you go Roy, is a part of an author. I believe Indians had to change in order to be free from Western control. Um, change some of their traditional practices. He said Sat Sati needed to go, the jumping on, into the fire with your past white husband. The caste system needed to be rethought and arranged marriages maybe needed to go. He wanted to modernize and westernize in order to get some of the economic boom in the country that would stay past when the British would leave. Because the British were there, but they couldn't stay there forever, could they? He contributed to the growth of nationalism, right? The power of the word, because you don't have TV, Twitter, Facebook, Snap, Insta. You, you, this is, the word is so powerful back then. The written word. There's an Indian National Congress to meet to discuss this. There are some Muslims here, mostly Hindus. Uh, the Muslim League. This is no, my bad. They didn't team up yet. Hindus and Muslims both have meetings and go, what's going on here? They both want self-rule so India can be its own country. And they team up to become leaders of the Indian independence movement. Oh, they did have mixed religions in there. Okay. So the things they start doing include boycotts. Um, you learn about this with, um, oh, geez. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And, um, and you learn about it in that book. You guys are reading in ELA. Watson's Go to Birmingham, is that what it's called? So boycotts when you refuse to buy stuff. This Fadeshi boycott. They were wearing only clothes that you make in your home. That takes a while to make, let me tell you. It's called homespun. The Muslim League is formed to protect the interests of Muslims in India and called for self rule. So they have a lot in common, so they kind of team up. And that's it. I think you had to fill in all your blanks. Um, this kind of helps you. You're going to realize that's a lot, there's lots of racism. There are some parallels to things going on in our country, I know. And nothing has a pretty ending. And nothing's done yet. In, in there are some lessons we should be learning from India, I'd, I'd say. And it's a shame. But um, right now, we're only filling in the blank notes on India and then submitting that. So um, what happens with our schedule is period one, two is working on this. And they can take their time. And then if you don't finish, finish the rest because it's due by Tuesday night. Um, if you're period four or six, you start this today, you finish it tomorrow. If you're period seven, eight, you start it tomorrow, which is Tuesday, five, five, Cinco de Mayo. And then let me think. So if, if period seven, eight, you can technically have to Wednesday if you needed to. So that everybody has two days, right? Got to be fair. But one, two, four, six, you have to hand these notes in by Tuesday. Okay. So there's a little bit each day. I will be meeting online. I'll be available online, um, you know, 
after this class time. So you email me and I'll get back to you. And another thing you need to think about is your essay. So most people got between an 80 and 100 who handed it in. Um, it took me a real long time to grade them because I'm keeping track of the scores and I had to hand them in to this database that I handed into the director of social studies for the district. And then if you didn't hand anything in or I sent back a message like, hey, you handed me five documents when you handed it in, but there's no paragraphs, then you can add them. You have till this Friday to add or fix anything. After that, so you don't want to have two test scores, zero. It's a long process. I have to send a bunch of emails, and then they do go in the gradebook as zero, not even a 50 or anything like that. Um, so please make sure that you try the essay. I will be on, you can schedule with me online to talk about the essay, fix it, add to it. Most people just only did an introduction on the first half or only did a body paragraph and didn't do an introduction. You got to do the other one. Um, lots of students so far I've seen, um, when I look, went to look at the second half of their essay and it's like conclusion and second body paragraph, there's nothing there. Like there's five or six documents sitting there, but there's no writing in it. And I was like, guys, hand it in. Um, so I'm going to continue to check that out. And I want, I want everybody to get an A or B. I want to see your writing. Um, Nobody who did the writing got lower than a C anyway. So just make sure that you do it. I know it's not the most fun thing, but you need to know how to write in order to ever get to like a college or even apply to a job like the Acme. They even have like small essays in the online application. Um, so I'll look forward to hearing from you. Um, I know that you're gonna hand this in and India is a neat unit and I, it's fun to root for Gandhi, the, the underdog, and that's what we're gonna do this week and beyond. But make sure that you finish that essay because this, this, these notes are a homework. And if that's late, okay, just communicate with me and say, I'm, I'm going to fix my essay and by Friday and I'm going to try to do the homework too. But if you've not done any of the essay, it might take a lot of work this week to, to focus and finish that essay. And that's the test grade is more powerful than a, a homework grade. So I want you to think about that and do well. And I want you, everybody to get an A, B, or C. Just make sure you do the essay. Even if it's rubbish, we can go back and fix it, right? Okay. Wagner out, and uh, we're going to have a good social studies week with a new schedule. Um, you'll see what's going on on Wednesday, Thursday, later in the week, and then Friday is just for, like, fixing stuff or catch up for you or one-on-one -on -one or group, and I will be on Google Hangouts a lot on Friday um, to help anybody that needs help. All right. Bye, guys. Now, how do I end show and stop the video?